The Red Raiders are looking to secure back-to-back -back winning seasons in the first two years of Joey McGuire and their third straight bowl victory. Standing in their way, a familiar bowl opponent in the Cal Berkeley Golden Bears. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we will preview the Independence Bowl down in Shreveport, Louisiana, set for Saturday, December 16th on ESPN under the lights between, well, I guess the Pac-12, technically not anymore, but we'll consider them in there right now, in the Cal Berkeley Golden Bears against the Big 12's Texas Tech Red Raiders. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more Texas Tech content. But I want to hear from you guys right from the jump. Who you got winning this one between Texas Tech and Cal out in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana? We'll see how many Red Raiders come. It's going to be a busy day for Texas Tech fans as you got graduation back in the 806 for the fall semester. Then you've got a Texas Tech men's basketball game in DFW where the largest alumni base is held for the Red Raiders. Or do you see some of those Red Raiders take the track from DFW about uh, two and a half, three hours east, depending on how fast you're going, abide by those speed limits, people, to go out to Shreveport and see Joey McGuire and crew. But before we get into that, let me know your score prediction down on the pinned comment below for the Independence Bowl between Texas Tech and Cal. I think I laid the groundwork in terms of the scene setter pretty well. Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana. It'll be on December 16th with kickoff set for 8.15 p.m. on ESPN. Now, the history between Texas Tech and Cal I think it's pretty well known at this point in terms of what's gone on between the Red Raiders and the Golden Bears. There's only been one other matchup. It was in 2004 with this guy named Aaron Rodgers against now the Law Tech head coach, Sonny Cumbie, and Sonny Cumbie beat the future Hall of Famer out in the Holiday Bowl. Yes, Texas Tech beat the number four Cal Golden Bears 45-31 in 2004, but both teams Enter the Independence Bowl in 2024, um, winners of three of their last four. So two of the hotter teams going into bowl season right now. Other things to know from the Texas Tech side of things when it comes down to it is this. This is the 30, 41st bowl appearance in program history with a win over Cal. It would only mark the second time in program history and the first since 2002-2004. Remember what they did in 2004 against Cal, that Texas Tech bolstered bowl wins in three consecutive seasons. Among teams nationally, Texas Tech is only one of nine schools that qualified for a bowl game this season after winning their bowl games in the two previous seasons. So a little bit of momentum there for Joey McGuire and crew. Talking about momentum and great things going on in Texas Tech football, well, there's great things going on over at Home Field Apparel, and y'all need to go check them out because this bomber jacket is the perfect Christmas gift right now. Listen, I understand it's a little expensive. They got some other things on there too, and we're going to help you save some money here on the Back to 12 podcast. How? Use the code BACK to 12 and get 15% off your entire purchase over on Home Field. You've got this vintage women's national championship basketball tee for the Lady Raiders, gas. You got the bomber jacket, gas. And you've got Plenty of other t-shirts and apparel that you will love if you are a part of Red Raider Nation. So I'll have the link down in the comments and in the description below. All you have to do is use code BACK to 12 to save 15% off your new favorite Texas Tech t-shirt, jacket, hoodie, sweatpants, you name it, they've got it over at home field. All right, let's jump into some of the injuries and transfer portal news for the Red Raiders side of things going into this. And as we know, that will look a little bit different offensively. you got some guys in the portal in terms of the offensive line, but really the skill position players is where Texas Tech has probably taken the biggest hit so far. Now, on the positive side, you got Taj Brooks coming back. You can't beat that, right? So having a guy that's already top seven in terms of all-time rushing yards and program history for Texas Tech coming back is big. But you lose the likes of guys like Jerron Bradley, Cameron Valdez, Miles Price, and a few others as well. We'll talk about some playmakers that we could potentially see here in a little bit more in depth in terms of the matchup that I'm watching. But some of those guys include right now TJ West, DJ Crest, and then you've also got Kelby Valson as well. A guy that not I'm just not bringing up. Also, um, Coach Kitley brought up yesterday in his media time 
for this Independence Bowl. Now, some guys that I'm watching in this game for Texas Tech. It obviously starts at the quarterback position, right, with Baron Morton. He had a 10, 11 straight days off, according to Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. How does this impact his shoulder? I think it's been fair to say over the past, I don't know, final two months of the regular season for Texas Tech, Baron Morton just didn't have the zip on the ball. And we all know that he missed the game against BYU. We saw what Jake Strong did. It's not ideal, right? But what does Baron Morton look like after some rest? Does he have that zip that we saw early on in his Red Raider career? back on the football, and can he push the ball downfield to some of these younger wide receivers that probably are better suited to do that? And then you've also got, obviously, Dre McCray as well, who can take the top off of the defense at any time. I mentioned Taj Brooks. He's back. That is arguably the biggest news Texas Tech can get all of this offseason. You get a guy that has a chance to be the all-time leading rusher back in your backfield going into 2024, he is 1,179 yards away from standing alone as the all-time leading rusher in Texas Tech program history. Let's see how many he can get against the Cal Golden Bears who give up more points than they score, and they are brutal when it comes to stopping the run. So can Taj Brooks have a big day out in Shreveport? The guy defensively I'm watching for for the Red Raiders is Jacob Rodriguez. Reason being is this. I really want to see him play with Ben Roberts. Those are going to be your two key linebackers going into 2024 if you're Texas Tech. Ben Roberts was the co-defensive freshman of the year in the Big 12 with a linebacker from Texas. Now you've got a guy in Jacob Rodriguez where this game doesn't count against his red shirt. He missed the Texas game. Would it have made a difference? Obviously not if you watched any of that game. But I want to see these guys get as many snaps as possible together in live game action because those are going to be stalwarts for the Texas Tech defense going into 2024. All right. On the Cal side, and before we get into that, one more time, if you haven't already, be sure to let me know your score prediction down on the pinned comment below for the Independence Bowl between Texas Tech and Cal, a rematch of the 2004 Holiday Bowl, where I already mentioned Sonny Cumbie beat the future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers. But let me know your score for, well, I guess the 2023 edition of that in terms of the rematch 19 years later, but this time in Shreveport in the Independence Bowl. All right. On the Cal side, some players you need to know. Fernando Mendoza is their quarterback. He led Cal in passing with just under 1,450 yards. He had 13 TDs passing this season, seven interceptions for the Cal quarterback. It's a similar situation for Cal that Texas Tech had in the sense of they started three quarterbacks. They had three quarterbacks with at least 95 passing attempts on the year, did Cal. Mendoza led the way with over 200, but He's the guy that's going to be the signal caller for the Cal Golden Bears going up against the Red Raiders. Now, the guy that you need to know if you're a Texas Tech fan on that Cal offense is Jade Knott, stud. One of the best running backs in the Pac-12 in a, in a league that's filled with quarterback talent. Ah uh, is one of the best running backs in the Pac-12. As a true sophomore, he carried the ball just under 230 times had 1,260 yards with 11 touchdowns on the ground, all career highs. By the way, he's not done. He had 21 catches, 141 yards receiving, and two touchdowns there. Oh, and he had one kickoff return for 100 yards for a career high in terms of all-purpose yards of just over 1,500. He's a guy Texas Tech is going to have to know where he is at at all time, and that's the reason I brought up Jacob Rodriguez and Ben Roberts. I'm interested to see how Texas Tech and Tim DeRuiter navigate that and really try to limit Jaden Ott's production. Now, on the defensive side for Cal, it'll be Caleb Alarm Ors. He is the guy that leads the way for the Cal Golden Bears in terms of tackles with 87. He's a sideline to sideline linebacker, and he is going to be really trying to pinpoint where Taj Brooks is at all times as well, much like Jacob Rodriguez will be for Ott. Now, when you look at the must-watch matchup for me. I want to see some of these tech wide receivers. I want to see how much these young guys actually get to play. We talked about it earlier in terms of TJ West. We got DJ Crest, and then you got Kelby Valson as well. I want to see what this wide receiver group looks like against the Cal secondary that is vulnerable, to say the least. What does Baron Morton do in terms of capitalizing off, off these opportunities? The young guys will be there, but you're going to see a starting four wide receivers in terms for Texas Tech. It's going to be Aiken, McCray, Brown, and White 
mostly in terms of the starters in that it will be Aiken, Brown, and then White as the slot in Xavier White's last game in the Scarlet and Black. Now, as for the odds in this one and the prediction, you look at the bottom of the screen, Texas Tech is two and a half point favorites with a total over under set at 58 and a half. I am taking Texas Tech to win this one 33 to 24. I think the Texas Tech offense actually comes out and is super creative in this. They just throw everything up against the wall to see what sticks. And you're going to see some offensive linemen really try and have the opportunity to potentially win a job next year. You're going to have Ty Buchanan as the starting left tackle. Then you're going to see at left guard, that's potentially where you could see Cole Spencer. Maybe not. It really depends. I bet you see a lot more of Jacoby Jackson there, though. At the center spot, you're going to see Dennis Wilburn in his final game as a Red Raider. Then Rusty Stats at right guard with Caleb Rogers at right tackle. That is presumably your starting offensive line for the Red Raiders against the Cal Golden Bears. I think they play well against the Cal pass rush that really isn't all that great outside of two guys. I think they can do a good job. Taj is going to get his time as well. But I think in the end, the Texas Tech offense proves to be too much against the Cal Golden Bears and the Red Raiders. Head back to Lubbock with yet another winning season under Joey McGuire and their third straight bowl victory. But I want to hear from you guys. Does Texas Tech get that third straight bowl victory? Let me know down on the pinned comment below your score prediction for the Independence Bowl out in Shreveport, Louisiana at Independence Stadium. Let me know what you got down below. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech football, not just on the gridiron, but off of it as well. We've got you covered on the recruiting trail, guys that could potentially step up, some sleepers, maybe even more when it comes to off-season videos here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. So join the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube by simply hitting that subscribe button right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.